In this video, I will go over how to render this into a video. Uh, so this is something that I did a short while ago. Uh, I'm not sure at what point you will be seeing this lesson, but uh, yeah. Um, so, okay, so here I like my video and I want to turn to a video. Now, first of all, every time we save this inside After Effects, save, or save as in this case, uh, it's just saving it into an After Effects project. So this is just called AE Kinetic Text dot AEP. So this is just a project for After Effects to open. Now, this, that's not a video file, that's just a project. So now that I'm done with this project, I want to turn it into a video. Uh, to do that, of course, got to make sure that I like my video. I uh, got to make sure everything's fine. Got to make sure my audio is fine too. All that stuff, including my timeline. Uh, is this how far I want it? Uh, is it long enough? Is it short enough? All that stuff. You also want to make sure to turn on your motion blur if you're using that. Uh, but yeah, so now that that's done, and okay, I'm ready now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into composition. Uh, first of all, if I'm in multiple compositions, I'm going to go into my last one, my final composition, which in this case, it is called text underscore final. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into composition, and then add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. In the past, if I were to do say this, add to render queue, I can render it within After Effects. The problem with that is the file size becomes really, really large. Um, but let's say, okay, I just do my settings, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, everything's set to this, make sure my time is set to how long I want it. Uh, best settings, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is fine. And then I would just click on render and that's it. Now, we're not going to use this. The file size, like I said, is really, really large, so I'm not going to go over that. But in case Adobe Media Encoder doesn't work, this is the alternative. Um, so, best settings. Make sure the time is set to the duration you want it to be. Under lossless, let me bring this over here. Uh, the format, you want to change it to preferably H.264 if you see it. I don't see it on mine. Uh, AVI and QuickTime are your next best options. Most likely it'll say QuickTime. Uh, just leave everything as is. Audio format, make sure that if you have any audio to set it to on. Uh, but 2018 does have it set to automatically detect. Uh, previous versions would be turned off. You'd actually have to turn it on. Everything's fine. And then I'll just click on render. Uh, I'll just do it real quick. It'll do all of this. I'm gonna stop it. I don't want anything. Um, oh, and by clicking on this right here, that's how you can give it a file name and designate where it's gonna be saving to. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. That's with that. Uh, but preferably, with uh, while you're in your final composition. Go to Composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder, Q, and here we are. Um, so I already have one from before, so I'm going to right-click and remove. So here's the one that I just did. In fact, I'll just do it one more time. So I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to go into Composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder, Q, and here it is. Uh, so what I can do is I can click on this and choose the preset. And all these things, like if, okay, I'm going to put it on Facebook, there it is right here. Uh, if I want Twitter, there it is, Vimeo, uh, VR, or YouTube. It's got those presets. Um, but I actually want to play with my presets, so I'm just going to click I'll, either on this or this. doesn't matter which one. And then we get this window here. Let me move it. Okay. Um... So to start, uh, here is our timeline, just like in After Effects. It's the exact same thing. I can say, well, I changed my mind. I actually want to start right here. I don't want to see this intro part. So I'm just going to either drag this or just click on this right here, and there it is. Same thing with this. Oh, 
I wanted to just end right after it is, and that's it. Well, I'll click on this, and that's it. So you do have those options here. Um, I don't like to do it from here, but I mean, it's, it's there. Uh, one thing is here my screen turns black because if I, this is set to three seconds and three seconds point one millisecond or one frame basically. If I go into After Effects, I can see that, let me drag this over here so I can zoom in. Once it ends, that's it. So this ends right at three. I cannot go any further. This ends right at three seconds, but uh, I have 3.1 millisecond. And I don't like that. I don't want to see that black uh, screen at the very end. So it's going to be one frame. I don't like that. It, it, to me, it seems like it's a glitch. So what I would do is I would just go back one frame. Now I am at three. Or of course, you can just type in the number that you want. So, and then I'll just click on this, and now it's going to end right here because I don't want there to be a split second of this uh, blank screen. Uh, anyways, so that's a very that happens to me often. Uh, the best way to fix it is to just uh, add this and just drag it to the right. Furthermore, but I can't here. I would have to do it from here. But in order to do that, I have to go into composition settings and increase the time here we can see it's at 3.01 i'll just do 10 and i would just uh drag all of these past here i'd unlock this there now when i go back to here it stretches beyond my three uh my three second Thing. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's that's one method, and you can also just change it to this one as well. Enter. So now it's exactly three seconds, except I cannot go to the last keyframe over here. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of annoying, but that's just how it works, I guess. Anyways, uh, now that I've gone over this. Um, Top right, of course, I can also just click OK, uh, right click, remove, and then add to Adobe Media Encoder again and it's repeat. But, anyways, it doesn't matter right now. So, I'm just going to go back to this and from the top part, uh, if you go into format, same thing as before, here are the different formats uh, QuickTime, uh, MPEG, AVI, all those things. But for this, we just want to play with or use H.264. So there's that. And from here, the preset, here's these presets, just like from earlier, uh, Facebook, uh, Vimeo, VR, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I were to say, okay, I'm gonna put this on YouTube and I know that, let me go back to this. I know that my composition is actually 720p, 60 FPS, three seconds long, blah, blah, blah. And if I go back to here, I can see that when I go to my preset, I'm just gonna go into 720p. So it's gonna change the output, it's gonna change these values. So I can see it's set to 720p. I can see the encoding settings, all that stuff. My bit rate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my frame rate is, uh, set to match my composition, which is at 60. Uh, but if I change anything over here as well, it's just gonna change those settings too. So yeah, so you get that. Uh, I tend to just stick with match source, but to keep it simple, especially for the kids, especially if they wanna do this at home, just stick with YouTube 720, if that's what they have. If they have a 1080p video, then have them do it in 1080p video. But uh, YouTube 720p is fine. I tend to stick with just this, match source, high bit rate. And what I'll do right now applies to all the other ones too, but I'll just do it for this one. Um, for output name, if I click this, it's gonna bring up, bring back this box. But one thing that's different, here I can rename it and blah, blah, blah. 
but I can see that I am actually inside a new folder. My projects is right here, but it creates a new folder based off of the file name or the project name inside After Effects. So here it is. And by default, it just does this. It creates a new folder and it saves a video inside there. I can export the video. Or maybe I don't want video, or maybe I just don't want the audio. In this case, I don't have any audio. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, down here is my file size, estimated actually. Uh, and then right here for summary, the output is what it's going to, what I am going to render it to. What are the settings that I'm choosing right now in this window? And uh, let's see. And then for the source, uh, this is just based off of my composition. So if I go back here, here's my composition, 720p, three seconds, 60 FPS. Whoops. And then here I can see it, uh, 720p, 60 FPS, three seconds. Uh, the one is from earlier because they didn't update it, but whatever. And there's no audio. So that's what the source is, basically the composition from After Effects, and what I'm going to save, what kind of video settings I'm going to save it to right now, basically, inside this window. So if I scroll down, I can uncheck this and give it my own width and height, whatever. So if I just do whatever, I can then say, well, I change my mind, just match source, and that's it. Match source will just match the source for every single thing down here. But if I want to post a specific thing, I can just uncheck and then change the value from there. Uh, one thing that I do recommend when you go into your video tab, do not use your, try not to use your mouse wheel because I tend to do it all the time. Uh, I mean, not anymore, but I did use, I used to do it all the time inside this window. The reason why I say not to is if I use my mouse wheel right here, it's going to select something else. So I'm not a fan of that. Uh, basically, you don't want to use your mouse wheel because then you'll change the setting that you didn't know you did. And you don't want software only, you want hardware accelerated, accelerated, jeez. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is when it comes to the video tab right here, all I do is I change the target bit rate. The higher the better, it also means it's going to be larger file size. And uh, but the more you have, the you also, if you don't have enough, uh, if the bit rate's not high enough, you run to the risk of having like pixelized uh, videos, basically. So I tend to go from 15, anywhere between 15 and 25, uh, maybe even 30, not really actually, but 15 and 25. 15 is good for text, I think. If you render it and you think it could be a little bit better quality, then bump it up to 20 or even 25. Um, for video with people in it, like actual people, 25 is fine. Um, but yeah, so you have that option. I do recommend playing with that. And uh, the other thing would be render at maximum depth by mouse over. Rendering at maximum bit depth improves the video's quality but increases how long encoding takes. I tend to check that as well as right here. We use maximum render quality, gives better quality scaling but increases the encode time. I tend to just check those two and then change this to somewhere between 15 and 25, depending on what kind of a video it is. And then for audio, I just leave everything as is. But in this case, because I have no audio, it doesn't really matter. But if I did have audio, most likely I'd have audio from, like say, YouTube, music that I got from YouTube. And I know that all audio that I would get from YouTube would be a 120 kilobyte per second uh, uh, audio file. So I'll just change it to this. Now, just because I change it from 120 to 320 does not mean that it's going to sound even better. That's not how it works. Uh, it's, uh, it just doesn't do that. Uh, so you're best off just changing to 128. That way you save yourself some space. But here it doesn't really matter. But when it's a really long video with a lot of audio, then it does matter. Um, but yeah, same thing with video. If I have a 720p video, just because I changed it to say 1080p, which would be 1920 by 1080, just because I change it doesn't mean it's going to look even crisper. Uh, it's not how it works. 
I'd have to go back into After Effects, set the composition to 1080p, and then bring it back to here. But uh, yeah. And uh, so yeah, so basically this, uh, and then if you want, check this, check that, go into audio, 128 most likely, and then just click OK. So I'll just click OK. Whoops. So I clicked OK, and now it's ready. So I'm just going to click on the green play button, whatever. And then down here, it's going to give me a little, OK, that was really fast. And then, you know, that's it. I'm done. Now, one big problem is kids have no idea where the file is. I mean, it would have been nice if they paid attention to where it was, but that's fine. Uh, that's fine. All you got to do, you can look at this, or better yet, just right click, reveal output file, and boom, there it is. So here's the folder that it created inside the projects, which is where I save my projects and blah, blah, blah. So it created this folder. So the folder has the video, and it's actually this size, which is not three megabytes. Let's uh, let's open it then. And let me bring it over here. Let me double click. So the text does get blurry. That's something I can fix in After Effects, but uh, this is fine. Um, it's not a big deal. Let me close this. Uh, and then this stuff here, I have no idea what this is. It's like a temporary file. I have no idea. I think this is like a, a auto, like an automatic uh, file saving just in case something crashes. I don't know. You can delete these if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's how you do that. And then one last thing. I don't think I've gone over this. It's uh, so I've been working in After Effects, and sometimes I'm like, okay, well, my computer is running out of space and all that stuff. Basically, every time you run in, you preview things, you render like this, plain things inside After Effects. After Effects is saving these calculations. For example, this green stuff. It's saving these things for you to next time you play it back, it plays it back like normal, which is why. It, it's doing it right now. It's not so obvious right now, but it's more obvious when you have more things on screen. Uh, but basically, uh, if I go into Edit, Purge, All Memory and Disk Cache, I have 500 meg megabytes to clean. Uh, after a day of working on this, or not even a day, like after doing a video for like these lessons, I get about 40 gigabytes of disk space being used by After Effects. Not so much for these ones, but mostly on the more real life footage sort of things. So, um, but once in a while, it's a good idea to clean it up. That way you can give yourself some more uh, storage. So I'm just gonna click okay and it's gonna do that and that's it, it is done. Because if I go back, oh, well, I don't know why I have seven, but that's fine. That's, that's nothing. Uh, so yeah, that's how you uh, render and purge your disk cache.